welcome back to La Vida Pasta. I'm your host, Chef Justin Barker, AKA <laughs> Big Chef 51. And today I am really, really happy to have a guest star chef with me, Clayton Saxauer. Hey, Hello. Clayton and I have known each other for many, many years. He's a fellow Buckeye. Check it out. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Uh -huh. I'm a alumni. That's it. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly. He can wear the gear. So today we're going to make chicken Kimberly. And chicken Kimberly is a dish that will change your life. Why? Because it was created actually by my brother Jim Barker, who is an unbelievable chef in his own right. But this dish is a chicken dish that is wrapped. Uh, it's a breast of chicken with prosciutto, chivrigo cheese, some just delicious herbs and spices like basil, oregano, parsley, a little salt and pepper. You got my mouth water. Oh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And what you're gonna have is, uh, it's finished with a white wine, butter, and garlic reduction when we're done. So, super simple to make, easy, anybody can do this, guys. Let me show you the ingredients. We're gonna start off with, these are chicken breasts. And in my last video, I showed you guys how to open a chicken and cut it. But these have been opened, like butterflied, pounded down so they're nice and flat. The next thing we need is prosciutto, okay? This is from Publix. It's a, it's a prosciutto that's, this is about $7. Um, you're gonna need chivri goat cheese. This is garlic and herb goat cheese. You can it's see it's a very creamy texture cheese. You're gonna need a couple of cloves of garlic. I already minced those for us. You've seen in my previous video. You're gonna need some flour that I've salt and peppered. You can see some of the seasonings in there. You need a really nice bottle of wine while you're enjoying yourself cooking. Well, the reality is you don't need red wine for this, but of course, my buddy Clayton and I, we're getting together and we're gonna enjoy a nice bottle of Chronicle. By the way. Delicious. Chronicle happens to be one of the uh, finest wines you can get. It's out of uh, the Napa Valley area. The winemaker, Mike Henghold, is, uh, is world class. His Pinot Noir is the highest scoring Pinot Noir ever by an American, American winemaker. Look for it on wineslash.com. You also need some good butter. This is unsalted sweet cream butter. You're gonna need some salt and pepper. You're gonna need some Italian parsley. Okay, look at the Italian parsley. It's very different from traditional parsley. You're you gonna need most, some basil. Go ahead. I will tell you, most people don't know what flat, uh, what Italian parsley, but what you're gonna find a lot of times, it's gonna say flat parsley. Flat so leaf. if you mm -hmm. see flat leaf parsley, that's the stuff we're looking for. There you go. You're gonna need a little oregano. I'm using dry oregano here. Um, you don't need fresh for this because we're using so little of it. And essentially some basil. This is this is fresh basil. I like to roll it up. And just to remind you when you're cutting basil, roll it up into a ball. And then literally all you're doing is walking your fingers back on that. Look, all the way through. And then one or two times through. And you've got nice, nice basil there. Same thing with the Italian parsley. We're gonna chop that up just a little bit here. You don't need it super, super fine, but what happens is all of a sudden, Clayton, get in there, smell that. Sure. Smell that, just, is that, I mean, oh. it's just insane, right? Mm. So all of a sudden, it, it, this boring, some boring um, uh, spices will come alive. Everything comes alive. The and oils, remember, we're releasing the oils. That's, that's right. We're, we're releasing the oils, it's got all the fragrance, and you just, oh yep. my God, it's, it's hitting you right now. And here's what, <laughs> what else we're doing. We're taking the ingredients that are gonna be in our dish, and we're allowing our brain to connect to the wine that we're drinking. Our palate is now connecting to some of the, to the wine that we're drinking. So uh, we're gonna raise a glass and when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to prepare the chicken. Okay, it's time to put the chicken together. So we're gonna take a flattened chicken breast, okay, which you saw earlier, right? We butterfly it out, we pound it down. And all, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna lay it down, a little bit of flour right there. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our prosciutto. Oh, this stuff is just nectar. Prosciutto is a salty ham, and you're gonna get this, it's an aged ham, you're gonna get this incredible flavor. It's so thin that, mm -hmm. that it's just the right amount of salt without overdoing it. Exactly. And, and it crisps up like a bacon, Yeah, so to speak. Oh yeah. But the best bacon you've ever had. Oh, it's <laughs> insane. The flavor of this is insane. So you just wanna kind of flatten this down a little bit, right? With the goat cheese. Yep, now, a little bit, just a little bit of a little bit of oregano, just a little bit of the parsley on the inside, and a little bit of the basil, mm -hmm. fresh basil on the inside. And what's gonna happen now, if you watch, we're gonna roll this into its own little nest. We're gonna use a toothpick down through the middle. 
like that, okay? Nice. So this is the beginning of it, and now we're gonna roll it in our salt and pepper with, with flour, okay? So, great, now one done, okay? Now, when we come back, you're gonna see us start to cook them, but before we go, I wanna show you what we're doing to the um, olive oil. So come on over to the oven. We're gonna take a couple of knobs of butter, which are teaspoons, right? And we're gonna add them. It's still a little warm, right? So we're gonna turn that oil down. I'm just gonna add a little butter to it and let that butter start to cook down in there. And what's gonna happen is this is what we're gonna cook our chicken in, okay? Just a couple of little knobs of butter in there and you're gonna see it's gonna brown up. It's gonna brown up that chicken like you've never seen. It's gonna be so good. I can't wait to show you. We'll be back in about okay, five guys, minutes. So we're back. All the chicken has been rolled like you saw just a minute ago. And you'll notice the toothpicks are buried in there nicely so that we can continue to flip. You also want to pay attention when you're pounding out the chicken to make sure it's about an eighth of an inch thick all the way through. So when you pound, that's why you pound the chicken is to get it so it's even size all the way through. So you don't have one thick section of chicken and one little thin section of chicken. So all of these chicken are ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and put them in. Now, you're gonna hear this start to sizzle a little bit, right? This is what we want. Okay. Mm -hmm. so the water's kind of browned up a little yep. bit. Gives that, nut, gives that nutty flavor. Nutty flavor, that's right. A sweet cream butter. So, mm -hmm. so what we're doing here, guys, and why we put the chicken on like this, we're talking about medium heat here. The oil is at medium heat, if you'll notice. So medium is about halfway up between low and high. Why are we doing this? Because we don't want to burn anything here. It's going to crisp up and brown up perfectly as it is. And, and the, the goal here, right, when you look at the chicken, the goal here is, is to let the chicken cook where it sits for about five minutes on each side. So then little by little, we're gonna turn it a quarter turn at a time, or actually a half turn at a time, then a quarter and a quarter. And what's gonna happen is, um, you'll see me flipping it, is it's gonna cook all the way through. We're gonna take the chicken out, let it sit. We're gonna begin our reduction and then we're gonna reintroduce the chicken into the nectar before we're, uh, before we're ready to serve it. So when we come back, what you're gonna see is us uh, flipping the chicken and we're gonna, you're gonna see it totally done. So take a look at it now. You want a nice pair of tongs and what's gonna happen is you wanna let it get, don't, don't move the chicken for about five minutes, okay? Let it cook. You're worried about it burning on the bottom of the pan? Don't, it's okay. You're sizzling the meat, it's gonna caramelize and you're gonna see, we're gonna flip it and it's gonna be nice and brown. So when we come back, well, you know what happens. Oh, wait a minute, guest chef. Actually, what happens, a lot of, lot of people wanna turn it too quick. And what happens is, that's when you get things that stick to the bottom of the pan if you turn it too soon. If you let it set, you'll let it get that nice crust, it will just lift up and turn perfectly. Perfectly. Patience is what you gotta have. See You're not that? gonna burn it. Go slow, go low, and be patient. How about that? And you can smell that. That's just... Here's a guy coming in to live eat a pasta right here and he's ready to go. Ugh. All right, when we come back, we'll be back in about five minutes. We'll show you when it's time to turn it. Hey, okay, guys, look, here we are. It's about time to turn them. So what we're gonna do is a nice even turn. Flip over all the way. Look at that brown. Oh, look at this crispy right here. Oh, stop it. Look at that. Oh, it looks good. It smells oh, good. Oh my gosh. That's a perfect brown. That's a perfect brown, guys. What you, see the difference in the colors? That's what we want, okay? The flavor that comes off that caramelization like that, it's just, mm -hmm. that's, that's the dish. Okay, so now we flipped them over about halfway. Mm. Now we're gonna let those cook. Now, mistake a lot of people make, okay? Either they don't start with enough olive oil or they don't have enough butter. Guys, listen, it's okay to make a mistake. Add a little more olive oil if you need to. Add a little more butter if you need to. And let it heat up. Don't feel the need to jack the heat up and change the temperature. Take your time, enjoy it, cook with it. Enjoy that, okay? We'll be back in a few minutes and I'll show you what it's like to, to uh, Add the, we're gonna make the reduction here in a few minutes. So see you in a minute. So, uh, remember what we're talking about, we're flipping the chicken. Take a look at why I say flip the chicken. So we're now flipping it and you can see how everything's brown nicely, but look, this is the part of the chicken that's not done. This is the last section that needs to be flipped. So what you're doing is you're flipping them over. Look at the brownness over here. We're gonna go two, we're gonna go three, we're gonna go four, we're gonna go five, Whoops. This little guy doesn't want to cooperate. We're going to put him in here and we're going to flip this last guy right over here. Okay, good enough. 
Now, the next step is reduction sauce. We'll be back in two minutes to do that. All right, See so we bit. just removed the chicken. Now we wanted to glaze this, but look at what's going on in this pan. Look at the colors in there. I mean, all of that goodness, we want to cook with that. That's going to be part of our reduction. So now I need you to step back. We're going to add a little bit of sherry or cognac. So what's going on here? Oh, there it goes. Whoa. There it goes, okay. So the flame kicks up. For some reason, it didn't want to. It's got a lot of alcohol. It's a little bit of alcohol. Long story short is this. Normally, it's gonna draw, there it goes. We're gonna draw a nice flame, and it's gonna cook off the bottom of what's going on there. And it's okay if the flame stays, it's okay. You can, the flame will eventually die out as the alcohol burns off. Now the alcohol is burned off. So what's gonna happen is, we're now gonna whisk a little bit of that goodness that's stuck to the bottom of the pan into this, okay, be careful. Keep her out here, all right? This is gonna be the reduction. All right, okay? Now we're gonna add a couple more, stay there, stay there, stay on the thing. A couple more knobs of butter, okay? Three knobs, good. In. We're gonna add a little of our wine. This is a Rodney Strong Sauvignon Blanc. And a little white wine in there, okay? Now watch what happens. The goodness and the nectar, garlic in. So what's all this liquid meant for? Let's so watch. Parsley, basil, oregano in. And what you're gonna see, a little salt and pepper. Look, look at that. Just a finger of salt and pepper, okay? In. We're gonna mix this together. Sm just smell that. Clayton, come on over here. The Tristan, wax. get a shot of the guest chef. Oh, yeah. Ow, you hit my arm. You can really smell the herbs. Right? Ooh, it's coming garlic. together. That's looking good. Okay, now we're going to cut the heat down to half. And we're going to let that sit and Start simmer. It's thickening up a little. Yep, Ooh. it's thickening up. See this? The smell is absolutely intoxicating. Friends, let me just tell you something about this, okay? Why you do this kind of thing is because your brain is connecting to all the herbs and spices that you're cooking with. So, so, oh, I'm, I, I can't begin to tell you what's happening in this, in this dish. So you're, you're whisking this all in, you're letting that garlic cook down, you're letting that garlic absorb the chicken, the salt, the pepper, the oregano, the basil, the parsley, all this is happening while this is coming together, right? That little tiny bit of sherry we used, that little tiny bit of sherry we used is all cooked off. Now we're letting the Pinot Grigio do its job. So, the heat's down, this is gonna settle nice, okay? And when we come back, in about five minutes after this settles, so, so when I mean settle, um, Clayton, uh, would you grab me a spoon? Sure. That drawer right there to your left, yep. Back, all the way to the back, way in the back. Yep, grab me a spoon, come over here, Tristan. So when I say settle, so look at this consistency now, is watery. What we want is it to be a little like It'll coat thick, the back of okay? that spoon. That's right, it'll coat, that's right. The French actually have a word when it says coat the back of the spoon. I'll have to remember that, I'll have to come back to that. But the goal here is to let this settle and cook down. So it's on like maybe quarter heat and we're gonna cook down for four or five minutes and we're gonna serve it over the chicken. We're we'll back in two minutes to show you the final result. Oh, look at this reduction, guys. Look at what's going on here. This thickness is just, Oh, the flavor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna now come over to the chicken and we're gonna allow the reduction to come right over the top of the chicken. As you can see, it's now thick. Yep, oh, now we're gonna let guest chef Clayton. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna get in there because you, you truly eat with all your senses. So it's not just about taste and everything. So what do you have? Mm, the garlic is hitting me. I'm getting a lot of that uh, uh, basil and the parsley and, and you can smell a little bit of the wine so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut into this we're just oh. gonna give it a nice little cut oh and oh. we're just looking at that look at that oh. look at that look at that that's a perfect perfect see how that's completely done there's no pink and it's still you I don't know if you guys can see that but that is just perfectly juicy I mean that's what you want right. you want that juice in there 
So now here comes oh my gosh, the I'm money. So, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a taste of that. Mmm. You got that cheese. You got those that herbaceous, you know, it's just falling off the back of your tongue. You're getting that little bit of wine. Garlic's definitely coming through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a difference between the crust on this piece of chicken versus the tenderness inside. And then you get the prosciutto. It's just melting in my mouth. And so we're just gonna take a little bit of wine that we used in this uh, dish. See, that's perfect. It's perfect because it pairs really well. You can, mm. The difference between the cooked down wine and the fresh wine is just complements it. Dude, what do you think? Mm, Did that it is, for you? And the thing is, that is so easy to make. It was so easy to make. It took little time at all. You make this at home, you're going to wow your friends. So, Without question. Guys, let me just say this. <clears throat> Thank you for that, Chef Clayton. So, again, like, share, and subscribe to La Vida Pasta. Have fun with this. Guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you have any questions of the ingredients, I can list them below. Anything at all, just remember, have fun. Cook often. Drink wine while you're cooking. Enjoy yourself. And thanks again for coming. Cheers. Thanks again for Clayton for coming, buddy. Thank you. Here's the Libby to Pasta mm. and cheers. Mm.